Our group is going to share what we've learned about the chemistry of paint. Chemistry has always been very important in the development of painting. Artists have been trying to get the most realistic colors that they can, and they use chemistry to help them find the best pigments. These discoveries often come by accident. For example, in the 1800s, a worker at a chemical company in New Jersey noticed a leak in one of the furnaces, and he plugged the gap with some zinc ore and coal that was lying around from the company next door. He saw white fumes of zinc oxide rising from the pile and accidentally discovered a direct way to make zinc white from the unrefined metal ore. In the Middle Ages, painters were going to alchemists for their colors. The red color of vermilion is an example. Early vermilion pigments were found in ancient cave paintings in France, like this one. But later, vermilion pigments were made using mercury sulfide. This was made artificially by sealing sulfur and mercury in a pot and burying it in hot coals. The solid is then ground and becomes red vermilion pigment. This is called a stoichiometric reaction. This product was used by Arabic alchemists who were trying to make gold from base metals, especially mercury, mercury and sulfur. Another synthetic pigment invented in this time was the yellow pigment orpiment, which is arsenic sulfide. This was invented by Lucas Cranach in the 1600s and was highly toxic. Another dangerous pigment in use at that time was lead white. It was still the best white available, but it was very poisonous. Then in, 1870, in 1782, Bernard Guyton de Morveau discovered zinc white, which was zinc oxide and was much safer. Zinc melting then became a major industrial process in the early 19th century. It started another series of important pigments. In 1817, Frederick Stomer investigated a yellow byproduct by smelting it and found that it contained a new chemical element cadmium. He soon discovered that synthetic cadmium sulfide created gorgeous yellows and oranges. The cadmium colors were born. This includes cadmium red, which contains some selenium. In 1775, the Swedish pharmacist Carl Wilhelm Scheele discovered a bright arsenic-based green, which, which is copper hydrogen arsenide. Later, Nicholas Louis Vaquilin discovered a chromium and introduced the chromium colors yellow which is lead chromite, or orange, which is lead chromite and lead oxide, and green, which is radian chromium oxide di dihydrate. Louis-Jacques Thenard discovered the synthetic cobalt pigments, blue, made the cobalt oxide and alumina and purple, made of cobalt phosphate, and is the first pure permanent purple artist ever, artists ever had. The most celebrated of the 19th century chemist's innovations in color was the synthesis of artificial ultramarine. It is a complex su substance, a sodium aluminosilicate with some oxide ions replaced with fol folysulfide ions. It may also contain calcium chloride and sulfate. It was made by heating china clay, charcoal, quartz, and sulfur in a kiln. Aniline was the beginning of a lot of synthetic pigments, like mauve, a beautiful purple dye developed in 1856. Aniline is an oily poisonous liquid chemical extracted from the distillate, distillation of coal tar compounds, which are byproducts of coke and coal gas. Many other dyes created from coal tar soon followed, including the first artificial production of natural dye. Alizarin synthesized in 1868 and still sold today as alizarin, crimson, and other red violet mixtures. In the 1860s, the French Impressionists were looking for the brightest, most vivid colors they could get. They applied chromium, cobalt, and cad cadmium colors unmixed in complementary hues side by side to enhance each other's brilliance. For the artist Claude, Claude Monet, shadows were purple, snow, and snow wore blue and pink. He and the other Impressionists used synthetic colors and pigments as bright and as vibrant as possible. After the Impressionists, synthetic pigments became common, and today most of the paints that artists use are synthetic mixtures such as Quinta, Quinta Crydrones. Sometimes they are called using their old names like Naples Yellow, Mars Red, or Van Dyke Brown, but they are not really that. They are synthetic chemical mixtures made to look as good as possible. 
The chemical structure of this synthetic pigment, beta quintoquadrone, PV19, is two pairs of oxygen and nitrogen atoms set in five interlinked rings of carbon. It has five rings, so that's why it has quints in its name. Chemical variations come from groups of atoms hung symmetrically from both sides of the molecule, which act as oxochromes to modify the color and as a complementary chemical bonds that link the quintoquadrone molecules into more chemically stable crystal chains. A solution of quintoquadrone molecules are pale yellow to orange color. And the pigment is actually determined by the particle size, uh, the crystal modification, and variations in the oxochromes, or also by crystallizing together different quintoquadrone molecules. So, we hope you've enjoyed our group's discussion of how to paint and pigments, oh, I'm sorry, of how paint and pigments are all about chemistry. The next time you see a work of art, think about how hard the chemists have worked to come up with it. Thank you. All right, sweet.